This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one solution for anyone looking to create an awesome website. This week we're going to do things a little differently. I've picked 10 of your questions that I'll answer throughout this video, so be sure to watch until the end. For our first question, Dark asks, besides creating, what was the most important thing you learned to grow as an artist slash YouTuber? Besides actually creating, I think community is a big one. Being active in online art communities and forums and engaging with other artists and creatives is a great way to grow and provides you with a valuable source for advice and feedback. And you'll also be creating cool work in relationships with like-minded artists who may even give you that big break further down the line. Networking is very valuable. Okay, our next question is, do you not feel 2D is somewhat limiting because you are restricted to the stock images you find online? And would you ever try to learn 3D to solve that? So I'm still relatively new to the photo manipulation compositing scene. Uh, before this, I was a digital painter working specifically as a concept artist and illustrator. And for the most part, I find a combination of these skills to be sufficient in bringing my ideas to life. However, there are definitely times when an asset or idea is simply too complex or time consuming to create. And yes, in these cases, having the required skills in 3D would be very useful. On the other hand, 3D heavy artwork can sometimes look a little too clean and shiny for my personal tastes. So I'd have to find a balance. But yeah, it's something I'd like to explore someday and I'm all for learning new techniques to help improve my craft. Now is the perfect time for me to introduce today's sponsor, Squarespace. It's no secret that a strong website is an essential tool for creatives. Now I'm not a pro web designer, and if I'm honest, I really don't want to be spending hours upon hours learning how to build a website from scratch. With Squarespace, all that difficult stuff has been taken care of, allowing you to spend more time doing what you do best being creative. Squarespace's excellent in-browser editor allows me to keep my website up to date with my YouTube channel. After I publish a video, I quickly jump onto my website and upload the latest thumbnail in the editor. I'll add the YouTube link and hit save. And that's it. It's really that simple. Squarespace also offers a wide array of features like members areas, blogging tools, and my personal favorite, website analytics. From here, you can get a clear overview of how your website is performing, from unique visits to page views, even down to top sources. And if you're just wanting to upload your logo and artworks, Squarespace offers loads of modern and solid templates to choose from. Be sure to check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash phase runner to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I'll drop a link in the description below. Marcus asks, what's something you wish you would have known when you first started using Photoshop? So firstly, just saving frequently. Uh, that definitely came back to bite me a couple of times in the beginning. And then if possible, just taking time away from a creation before calling it done. Sometimes you can spend so long staring at something that you're no longer able to spot the flaws as easily. Once you think you're finished, step away from it, let that honeymoon period fade and then come back to it and see if there's any tweaks to be made. Okay, what is the story of your backyard? The adventure begins in your own backyard. So I have a twofold answer for this. The literal answer is, as I've mentioned before, I'm a big fan of all things 80s, specifically the movies of the 80s. The idea of the backyard is taken from one of my favorite movies when I was a kid called Explorers. The movie, is specifically the VHS cover, just encapsulated my childhood memories, the wonder and belief to make the impossible possible. So the line, the adventure begins in your own backyard is also a tagline for that movie. And as for me and where my artist story began, the first time digital art piqued my interest was when I was studying to become a web designer at university. Uh, during my time there, I somehow stumbled across the world of digital painting and developed a real passion for concept art and illustration. It wasn't long after that that I dropped out of university to pursue a career as a self-taught digital illustrator. 
And 12 years later, I'm fortunate enough to say I've worked with various clients on many exciting projects. Next question from Frostify. What would be some advice you would give someone wanting to start painting slash manipulations? What are some useful tips you've learned about the industry? For new and upcoming artists, I would say you need to forget about views and comments and likes. Instead, focus on your personal growth as an artist and hone your skills in silence. Develop as an artist away from the noise and buzz of social media. If you're not in a position to pay for courses, there's a ton of free content available on video platforms like YouTube. And if you're passionate about it, use whatever tools are at your disposal in regards to software and hardware. If you can't afford Photoshop, use a free alternative. Things like color theory and perspective never change regardless of what program you use. Certain skills will always be transferable. And regards to tips about the industry, there's a lot that could be said, but for the sake of time, here's one of the most important lessons I've learned. While it's obviously good to throw your hat in and reach out to people, companies you'd like to showcase your work to, the truth is I've come to know that 99% of the work I've done, the client has reached out to me first and not the other way around. As cliche as it is, it's the quality of your work that does most of the talking and brings the clients your way. Do you usually sketch out your ideas roughly on paper before transferring the idea into the art, or does it just randomly pop up while the art is in progress? From Hannah. So for my digital paintings, yes, sometimes I would roughly sketch an idea onto paper. However, I preferred to do most of my sketching directly in Photoshop when possible so I could benefit from the editing tools from the get-go. For my photo manipulation stuff like you mostly see on this channel, I don't do any sketching on paper for those, but instead create simple composition mock-ups. Check out the beginning of my Creator Fantasy Fortress video to see an example of that. Jay King asks, where do you turn for inspiration? What motivates you to keep going? So other than movies and books and music, etc., a big inspiration for me is the online art scene itself. Ideas can often ignite from seeing another artist's work. You're not looking to emulate or copy the art itself, but you might be influenced by the use of scale, colors, or even subject matter. And what keeps me motivated? Um, the success of others and setting goals, having something to strive for, and then putting in the hard work and seeing it pay off. I noticed that on your final beauty shots from your videos that your artwork has ghost grain effect. Is that something you add to finish off the piece? And if so, why? That's from Gianfranco Zangheri. Yes, I do. I add a noise overlay to a lot of my pieces. Uh, I think my style is quite rough and has a bit of a concept art edge to it. I like creating those cinematic shots, almost like a snippet from a movie scene. And so adding a little bit of noise or film grain just adds to that effect. It also helps tie the image together a little bit more. What is Photoshop? What is Photoshop? I'm not sure if this is a deep question or literally what is Photoshop? Well, answering the latter, give me a sec. What is Photoshop? Adobe Photoshop is a raster graphics editor developed and published by Adobe. From solo movies, what are your favorite pieces you have made? Ooh, if we're talking my whole body of work and not just YouTube, then my favorite piece would probably be one of my most recent posters licensed by Marvel called Worthy. That was definitely a fun one to make. What are your favorite Photoshop techniques for your art composites? That one's from Matteo Salguero. 
Okay, one technique I love, which I outlined in Guide Runner episode one, is the color range tool. It basically allows you to select a chosen color or tone from an image and is great for isolating certain textures and effects like clouds and smoke. Definitely check that out if you're not familiar with it. Do you have any tips for creativity block issues? I've definitely Googled this for answers myself on occasion, and I think it's ultimately different for everyone. For me, if possible, stepping away from the work and taking breaks can be helpful, going on a nice long walk, and a big one is just having someone to brainstorm with. Even if they don't have much input, just speaking ideas out loud can be helpful. Okay, so we're just about done with this image. I appreciate all of the questions you sent in. I'm sure we'll do it again at some point. Please drop a like and comment if you've enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to stay notified about any new content.